Come avete visto dalla slide, dal filmato stamattina introduttivo, ogni anno agli Odudes ci sono degli ospiti internazionali. Abbiamo avuto il presidente di Yoga nel 2014, Gillarm, abbiamo avuto l'anno scorso da remoto un altro rappresentante di, di Yoga, sempre di Odu Community Association, quest'anno abbiamo Pedro, che praticamente è, è l'uomo che non merge mai le mie PR, perché ogni volta faccio una pull request, non so... We, Pedro, we need to merge. <ride> per cui diciamo è fondamentale um, come dire, condividere eh, questi momenti anche con Odoo Community Association, quindi l'associazione internazionale di, di, di Odoo, che raccoglie tutte le varie localizzazioni, no? tra cui c'è l'Italia, ci sono anche altri, altri stati, altre nazioni. Perché in questo modo molte cose che noi portiamo oggi come eh, elemento di base nella localizzazione italiana in realtà le ereditiamo da OCA perché sono come dire, delle primitive che possono essere riutilizzate in tanti altri contesti, soprattutto i repository di account payment, account invoicing, reporting. C'è tanta roba che viene fatta a livello internazionale e riutilizzata in, uh, in Odoo. Uh, per cui diciamo l'elemento di condivisione si estende non solo al territorio italiano ma anche uh, va a tutta, tutta Europa e anche al resto del, uh, del mondo. Oggi Pedro ci parlerà dell'ecosistema di Yodou e io non rubo altro, altro spazio, prestate molta attenzione perché è, è prezioso il contributo di, di Pedro oggi così come lo, sono, come lo è insomma, quello degli altri Uh, relatori, però lui, lui ha detto che vuole parlare per, per due ore un'ora okay. <ride> va bene facciamo una pausa a Pedro, Pedro buon lavoro ok, secondo a te and as said uh, unfortunately I'm not able to, to talk in Italian so I hope you all understand me and uh, Today I'm going to, to speak about the Odoo ecosystem and this long name mm, means uh, the possible business models that in my experience you can uh, adopt in this ecosystem. A bit of uh, background about me and Pedro Manuel Baeza, the CTO and co-owner of Technativa. I'm uh, around uh, for now uh, 11 years, it's, <laughs> it's a lot, but it has passed very fast uh, since OpenERP uh, version 5. Uh, I'm also the president of the Spanish uh, Community Association, or Due Association, and also former uh, member of the OCA board. Member, uh, of the OCA board. And also, as said, I'm an OCA active contributor, and you, uh, you see me around on GitHub. So let's uh, start with this little meme that uh, summarizes a bit uh, what we have in this ecosystem. No? Uh, everyone wants open source, but when you have to <laughs> contribute, it's another thing. So first of, uh, of all, uh, what are the actors in this ecosystem? We have, of course, Odoo SA as the main, uh, as the main producer of it and the, the leader of the project. We have also the associations like uh, OCA, this association that is organizing uh, these days, and uh, other similar uh, local associations. And finally, uh, we are the implementers that uh, fulfill the, uh, the ecosystem and makes the rest of the, of the world. And I'm going to focus on this uh, last actor uh, in this talk. Uh, let's uh, start with the uh, hottest uh, one, the enterprise thing. Uh, this is non-literal words of Odoo SA saying that the, uh, the companies uh, only have to focus on providing uh, the implementers uh, uh, needs to provide these final services and let Odoo SA uh, do the, the rest. This um, can, can seem the, the natural way to, uh, to go, no? Mm, I don't have to worry by anything more, so what is the advantage of 
going this way. Well, at the beginning, it seems that it's easy. Uh, it's easier to, to start with this uh, way. It's mm, direct and so on. Uh, you are trained by ODUSA uh, itself, providing documentation, providing uh, methodologies and so on. And uh, also, uh, they provide technical su uh, support for avoiding to, to hire technical people. And also gives you uh, commercial visibility uh, through the partner list. So we have all these advantages. And also, uh, the, the company that makes this possible is a USA. So you are contributing uh, to that company that at the end is uh, what, mm, uh, what brings all of, uh, all of us here. What are the dis uh, disadvantages of going this way? Uh, well, it's a paying star. It's uh, logical that it's a, a paid one because they are doing, uh, they are giving you uh, some things. But it can be also a, a great barrier for those that uh, wants to start in this world. Uh, even uh, you, you have as advantage uh, this visibility in the partner list. Uh, this visibility uh, is not instantaneous. So you need uh, to uh, first do some commercial activity for getting uh, to be on the ready partner at least uh, and uh, starting to, to appear there for having uh, incoming leads. So this is also an important point that can be a very high entry barrier. And this is something that annoys me a bit uh, about uh, uh, this enterprise way that is how this partner list is managed. Because uh, the criteria are strictly, uh, we cannot say even commercial, but only based on some uh, numbers. And these numbers are about the enterprise licenses. Uh, so mm, uh, I, I don't consider this, uh, this criteria the, the, the more suitable one for uh, classifying partners. Because at the end, uh, you have mm, uh, um, uh, this, this list can be, uh, how can I say it? Uh, can, cannot be, uh, cannot reflect the sad situation, but an instantaneous one that you get to, to sell some licenses and so on. I, I will later dig uh, 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 more on this. More things about the license. Uh, you know that the enterprise uh, has two things, a uh, service that uh, consists on giving support, migration, and so on, but also it contains, a we can talk about a product, the enterprise modules. And these enterprise modules are licensed under a privative, uh, uh, a privative one. So uh, as implementer, you have one problem. That is uh, one of the things mm, for, for you as an added value, uh, which is ex extending the things that you already have on a do, on OCA, et cetera, to fulfill the, the customer requirements. So extending uh, enterprise modules, you have a problem because you cannot share uh, with the rest of community, being a private license. So uh, as an extension of this one, you also have that the maintenance mm, must be on your own because you cannot share, you cannot share also this maintenance. And you can also, uh, uh, you cannot benefit from the uh, already uh, continuous integration and quality uh, infrastructure that uh, is, mm, for example, present on the community part OCA. More things, uh, not direct disadvantages, but risks that you have to take into account if you go to, uh, this way. Uh, sometimes uh, the ten and how do uh, say manage uh, this uh, uh, lead you to, to be a, a mere reseller. <coughs> so if you get to this paper, it's very limited, and as so, it can be uh, a risk. There is also uh, an increase, uh, uh, those of you that are official partners of the USA uh, has seen that uh, each year we have more and more 
commercial, this, this criteria that I have told before, uh, and more requirements for fulfilling the corresponding partner levels. So we don't know when this is going to, to stop. They said in the last year that it's not going to rise and it has risen again. So it's only a risk. I don't know what OUSA is going to, uh, to do, but uh, this year we, we, we have had it. And uh, I, I make um, um, a, a question that I wonder, what is your customer scheme with this, uh, the, uh, the customer target, the customer size with this scheme? I will dig later about this. Another one that I will uh, go deeper is about what I consider a predatory situation on new licenses. And the last one is a saying that is called, uh, it's uh, translated from Spanish. I don't, I don't know if you have the same, the same saying, that is, don't put all your eggs in a basket. Uh, going this way, you are relying most of your activity on ODSA. So take that into account. About the customer target. Uh, we can talk about three uh, targets. The small customers, which are those with very few users, no customizations, and so on. But is this the target we want to, to go? It's very difficult to get to that one because they uh, usually go directly to Odus SA uh, through their online service or even uh, directly handle to, to OUSA uh, in these in this leads. So probably we, we don't get to these customers and if we get uh, by our own, we will require a lot to get to the partner levels criteria. So uh, let's go to the medium customer. On, uh, in, this, uh, in this case, we need um, several customization uh, usually and you can see uh, on the previous uh, slides about the problems w we can have doing customizations. And maybe this requires a total, uh, totally different uh, own structure. You need technicians and so on. And finally, the, the big customers, uh, they usually have a lot of users, so the, the enterprise fee uh, as is per user can be a big cut and also may require uh, dedicated uh, resources by your part. So maybe you are not also uh, fitting on this customer. Mm -hmm. uh, let me <laughs> re remember what is, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, talking about medium, medium customers, then uh, it's, it seems clear that with Odoo SA itself or Odoo Core modules, we don't have enough for uh, satisfying these uh, medium customers or big customers. So in the, in the puzzle you, you make on your Odoo system, for sure th uh, there are going to be other modules and other mm, ways to uh, put everything together. For example, uh, we can have the, the problem on migrations, on uh, um, bugs, and so on, because not being everything isolated on the Odoo SA, um, uh, um, how can I say, uh, Odoo SA modules, core or enterprise. So you have two options, pay a very big fee for Odoo SA maintaining these, uh, these extra modules, or go on your own for mm, seeing that thing. So it's something that you have to, 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 to think about. If you go to this uh, size uh, of uh, customers, is this is it enough with Odoo SA or not? And if not, you will need to uh, adapt your company for being able to handle all of these things. And in this case, is Odoo SA necessary? if you have already provided the things. So I don't want to, to say yes or no, but they are uh, questions that, that you have to make. 
Uh, this thing, uh, this is also a personal opinion, as all the, <laughs> the talk, of course, about the uh, current situation with the criteria uh, for being a, a partner, an official partner, and different levels. One of them is to get a number of new license. So uh, with this uh, requirement, you are forced to constantly uh, get new customers. And for that, if you get constantly new customers, uh, what do you need to do? Abandon the old ones. In my experience, uh, you can see that medium or big customers require a constant evolution, uh, customization, and so on, because their, uh, their business requires that. Um, more in this pandemic world, uh, we have a lot of uh, things to adapt. It goes to, to an e-commerce, go, uh, uh, control more things. So uh, um, for me, this year has been no new customers or um, very few and a lot of work on the existing one. So if you have this criteria, uh, more uh, sooner or later, uh, you will be out of the official partner list because you don't comply with the new customer uh, requirement. So that's, for me, uh, a, uh, a big risk uh, for entering on the enterprise way. Uh, another profile uh, that, can, uh, that you can think that uh, to fit on the, on the Odoo ecosystem is to be an APP reseller. Hey, I, I have developed this application and I want to, to sell it. It's, uh, it's another option, and as everything uh, has several advantages that I, uh, I list here, and also some disadvantages, in my opinion. What is the, the main advantage? Uh, you focus your skills on that area. You know a lot about one area, and, and so you only have to focus on it and not to, to know the rest of the, the possible areas in an ERP. Uh, another is that uh, you provide a way for ex uh, potential customers to get to that uh, skills and that uh, customization at a, um, a reasonable price that uh, if you are doing that for a specific customer, this customer uh, may not allow the, the, the total cost. It also provides a constant revenue. Once you have made the development, uh, you get uh, a payment for each, uh, for each uh, cell. But what are the disadvantages in my opinion? You need uh, an initial investment, maybe bigger or, or, or a smaller, but you, you have to, to do something in advance with no payment. So not everyone uh, can fit uh, in this. It's also another uh, great disadvantage, uh, disadvantage uh, to don't know if you are going to sell or not. Probably you are doing the, the APP because you expect uh, some people to, to, to buy it, but you don't know that. Another disadvantage, at least going through or do APPs, is the, the commission cut uh, you get. So it's reducing your revenues. It's fair or not and not just in, uh, just in this. Yeah, I'm only saying that you get uh, that. And you can, <laughs> also, you can also go to another way, um, uh, sell it on your own website and so on, and then uh, that won't be a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Another one uh, disadvantage is the pi uh, piracy. We, we have it also in this world. If you are selling something and you are at in the end providing uh, this APP, uh, you have the risk to be uh, stolen and used not the way you, you have thought about it. So it's another variable that you have in, in, in this uh, kind of, uh, of profile. More on this uh, about the support. If you go this way, uh, you will get a lot of uh, support tickets, uh, requests, saying that it doesn't work, and so on. And not having the full control over the system where the, the module is, uh, is being installed, uh, you will have to deal with a lot of fake 
bad reports. So it's something very uncomfortable and it's cutting your revenues. Your constant revenues are being cut be, uh, because of the handle of these things. Another, uh, another disadvantage is the version halving. Uh, okay, you can, uh, you can put a price for each version, but uh, if you want to get to, the, uh, to more audience, you will have to, to provide your module in a lot of version and also give support and so on. So this makes that uh, you virtually need to, to handle a lot of versions on this uh, development. And there is, mm, this can be a disadvantage or risk uh, that is, you have developed something, uh, invest a lot, and two years after, or the, the next version gets that Odoo core or uh, another contributor in OCA, uh, uh, et cetera, has uh, provided the same functionality, the same feature in an open way. So your development gets obsolete uh, at that moment because people is going to prefer the open one or to uh, extend that one. And another one that you also have is that the maintenance of the module is not shared. You are, mm, uh, you are selling this one, so you are the only one that needs to, uh, um, to fix whatever, uh, to maintain and so on. As you can see, I put more disadvantages in my opinion than advantages. Um, I, I, I don't like this way, but it's legit to, to go this way. And only trying to, to expose uh, the, um, the ecosystem as I uh, see it. Then there are another profile of implementer, that is the implementer with its module layer profile. What this mean? Well, you are providing services around Nodu, but also uh, have a, a set of modules uh, that you, um, you keep on your own for putting to your customers and only for your customers. It's a usual technique. Mm, I, I, in Spain, there are uh, some implementers this way. I don't know if here in Italy uh, it's, uh, it's a way of working or not. But if you go this way, you will have similar problems uh, as an APP seller about the non-share maintenance. Mm, in Spain, we say, Juan Palomo, yo me lo guiso, yo me lo como. <laughs> I, I, you, you have to do all the cycle. You have to maintain uh, the, the, whole, uh, the whole pile of module. You have to migrate it and so on. So everything goes on your own. I think you get uh, the, the worst of, uh, of both uh, worlds, the open one and the, the closed one. So for sure, I won't go this way, but uh, it's up to you. And another, another disadvantage I see is the technical debt. As you are on your own bubble, uh, maybe you are not uh, aware of some things on uh, framework improvements and so on, and then you continue your modules, your, uh, your layer, in the same way you, you do it uh, three versions ago. So that can uh, lead to, to a technical debt. Well, and this one, mm, okay, I see. Uh, that the last point, I did on, on the last moment, so <laughs> it's not with the animations. Uh, and now I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I think, let me see. Okay, more or less, it's not <laughs> going uh, well enough, but let's continue. And now this is my favorite one. Uh, I'm in this kind of profile, OCA friendly implementer, uh, implementer profile. So what I see with this, first, uh, what I consider this profile, uh, you provide services, but mm, you don't lock a product. You are not doing a product that you lock some way. Uh, so what is, uh, you are releasing these, uh, the modules you produce to, to OCA, to the OCA ecosystem, or maybe not OCA, but at least on open. Mm, releasing on open and not on OCA, you are also losing a, a lot of things. So if you are going to open it, Let's go to, uh, to OCA. 
Uh, what do you get with this uh, as advantages? Well, you are having a very uh, big infrastructure for uh, uh, assuring the quality of your modules. This is the CI infrastructure uh, and testing. So this is a big added value as at no cost. You also share maintenance costs. Uh, Tenativa may have uh, at OCA 500 modules uh, already produced. We maybe need to migrate half of them because other contributors uh, have seen uh, useful these modules and then migrate, uh, uh, migrate them. So we don't have to, to do that. Um, we don't have to do this work. It's a bet. You don't know exactly the, the percentage you are going to, to avoid to, to maintain on your own. But um, it's, uh, it's true that providing useful modules, you will have then uh, maintained by other contributors or at, le uh, uh, at least share. It's, uh, it's also valuable to have, uh, to have uh, a, ba a, a good back report by other contributors saying uh, what uh, to try and even hints for fixing uh, something, but not having the fix. Well, with that, uh, that tricks, uh, it's very easy to, to fix. So that's also an added value for having it in OCM. And the last one that appears at the uh, beginning, ser knowledge, this is also important. About the technical debt I have commented before, uh, on OCA, you have a lot of uh, experts on several areas, several things, technical and so on, then, uh, that can lead you to get a better module and before arriving your customer. So that's also important, avoid uh, the, the burden of the uh, customer complaining ab about something not working. So for, for, uh, for me, this is also a very big value. More thing on this. Uh, uh, this is what I com uh, commented already. Uh, you are getting free teaching people when uh, looking for something that is interesting, even in the pull request uh, phase, uh, gets you some, some hints and some uh, comments that uh, can lead to, to, be, um, to develop a better module with no, mm, a, a lot of more time. So it's important. And also you are seeing the technical depth uh, that can can have your module. Uh, there is some complain, uh, complainings about uh, I, um, for getting to, o, uh, to OCA, I need more time. Well, my, uh, my conclusion on this is because of the technical debt. If you have this technical debt on your development cycle, uh, you will require more time because you have to adapt to, to the standards and so on. But you, uh, once you get on the wheel, it, will, uh, it won't require more time. You only need the time to, to teach yourself, to train yourself on these, uh, on these extra and good guidelines. Uh, the way to avoid also this time, go OCA first, always. Don't uh, deploy on your customer and then uh, think about uh, moving that to, uh, to, to OCA because in that way maybe you will have a module that uh, is overlapping some functionality of another one, maybe the data structure is not the, the best one and so on. So this is very important on this flow. Next question, this is not uh, uh, a profile of implementer but uh, something that you have to, to think on your, on your business model, on how to work, to migrate or not to migrate. Um, for me, the, the answer is clear, migrate, but let's see why I say this. Uh, first thing is the, um, the technical debt you are provoking leaving yourself uh, a customer in a previous version. Uh, there are a lot of bug fixes that may not be on your, uh, on your previous version. Odoo, as you know, is fixing uh, bugs on the uh, officially supported versions. 
for now, uh, you, uh, you have uh, version 13, version 14, and version 15, the last three ones. So if you get on version 12, or maybe version 8, and there are a lot of version 8 uh, uh, around, uh, you are not getting these bug fixes. That's a problem. Uh, another one that is the life of the development cycle is that you are getting outdated libraries and foundation, Postgres and so on. And uh, these libraries and, and the rest of the, of the base of Odoo uh, also has their development cycles. So maybe they are uh, out, of, uh, out of support or, uh, already, Python, Postgres and, and so on. So getting that, you will be also uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable to that uh, to that lack of update because Odoo the, uh, on that version is not working on new libraries but uh, you cannot uh, you cannot upgrade this libra uh, these libraries because they are not working on the new, uh, on that version so uh, this is something that is also uh, uh, lit to mm? I, I have it on the on the next uh, slide. Well, I, I will talk about uh, that later. The GD, uh, uh, RGPD. Uh, the next thing is the, the evolution of the framework. On each version, the framework is evolving. Not on all, but for example, in version 13, we have a bit revolve on the framework. N being on this previous version. Uh, um, forces, uh, forces you to not use these uh, these commodities. So that can be something that uh, gets to your cost. It's uh, more complicated to uh, to develop on version eight, to develop on version twelve than uh, than on version uh, thirteen. So that's something that you can think as an investment. I invest on migrating instead of uh, uh, taking more developing time. And another uh, important thing for, for migrating is the fragmentation. If you are get, uh, keeping your old versions, at the end you have to support all these versions. So mm, the only thing to do is, I, I only keep this version, very outdated. So you, you will be on a disadvantage against other implementers that put a new version. And if you go to new versions, you will have that you have to maintain that version, but also the customers you get on the on the previous version. So you, you will have a, a very big a scope to to maintain, and that's not same for for technicians, and also at the end for your uh, for your uh, business healthy because having this fragmentation, more time uh, to get to the bug, um, your, your Ternesian people is more, mm, uh, it's less focused on the, uh, on the problems that you have on, on that version and so on. Uh, more about this, uh, as said, if you have outdated libraries, outdated version not supported by Odoo, you are vulnerable to security risk. And now there is an important regulation that is the GDPR, the data protection uh, regulation across all Europe, that is to be taken very seriously into account because it puts a responsibility a, mm, uh, um, a jurisdictional uh, responsibility that can charge you uh, about any breach, any, any possible leak. So it's important that you don't have to worry about these leaks. And the way to not worry about this is migrating to latest version uh, uh, for having at least the security that is uh, supported by the, by the publisher. <coughs> both uh, Postgres, uh, Python, and so on, and Odoo SA. As said, for me, there's no doubt you have to migrate. How? That's another question, and tomorrow I will have a talk about the community way to, to migrating, that is open upgrade. Odoo SA have its own way. Uh, if you migrate, then the, the consequence, the natural consequence of this is having new customers also on this new version. 
why going to, uh, to the precated one? Well, there are partners in Spain that are implementing on, uh, on this year still version 11. I see that as mm, something out uh, totally of uh, question, but it's their strategy. And, uh, and a, a little derivative of this question the, to migrate or not to migrate is to update or not update. I'm uh, using this, this work for uh, signaling about inside the same version, uh, there are implementers that freeze that version. So you are also getting some disadvantages. If there is a bug fix and you freeze your, your installation on the uh, installation date, you won't get that uh, uh, that updates and that bug fixes. So better also get the, the will and update constantly. What are the risks updating constantly? Well, on a USA, we have the stability policy uh, uh, warranty. Uh, this stability policy uh, fixes that uh, no data model changes are going to be made and no things that, can, uh, that cannot be reached through, um, uh, through updates. So with this, possibly updating Odoo, we won't get any problem. Sometimes, as everything, uh, all are humans, and there are <coughs> mm, errors on an update, but this is fixed on the coming days. So mm, maybe you get an, um, a conflicting uh, update, and it's fixed the, the, mm, the, s the following day. And on OCA, we don't have such a uh, rigid uh, policy because uh, if not, we won't be able to evolve uh, to able a, a module inside OCA. But uh, the, the controls, the quality controls on OCA, uh, assures that you will get a migration path for getting the new features on the same version. So it's uh, it's also very. Um, very recommendable to, to update also OCA modules. More things. Uh, <coughs> derived also from this, uh, this question or, or, uh, for migrating or no, there can be a profile of implementers that goes, hey, I want to be a migration speciali uh, uh, specialist uh, profile. It's also legit. Some, uh, some partners has gone this way. And uh, you perform the migrations between major operations for, uh, for this. The, the advantage of this, there is, uh, there is a market for this. Mm, mo most of you are uh, being aware of the advantages of migrating, but you don't have the, the, the capacity for doing uh, that. So you subcontract the, the thing. Mm, going to this way, you will have for sure uh, enough work for years. The disadvantages, uh, well, you don't control the situation of the code and database that gets to you to get mi migrated. And this is very important because uh, you have to take this into account for your <coughs> risk structure and your uh, budget. It's not the same to migrate one database than another because there are a lot of ways to, to screw things. Okay, so if you go this way, you have to take it into account for budgeting things and not, mm, I, I have seen aggressive things to say, I, I can migrate something uh, for 1,000 euros. Well, sometimes it's enough and uh, it's uh, even a lot, but not for all the cases. Okay, so have, uh, take this into account if you go this way. Uh, I'm getting uh, to, the, to the final, the, and this is my conclusion. As said, I think that the, the best fit on these uh, premises is to go to be a provider of whole services uh, for the customer not to have to worry about anything. And this is the added value you, you can do, uh, uh, you can give to your customer uh, instead of other alternatives like uh, like going directly to OSA or other implementers that don't use the, this formula. And obviously being OCA friendly for not having to, to maintain a lot and not uh, having the revenue cost uh, balance in a, in a healthy way. And also migrating. 
And finally, I have this, uh, this is directly from our customers. I have extracted the, um, the statistics about the modules we have on our customers. So, as you can see, the, the biggest one are OCA modules. This is not a surprise because everything or most of uh, what we develop goes directly to OCA, so we have a big part. Uh, the rest if is Odoo Core, which we consider is Odoo Community modules. A very a small part that is customization that don't fit on, on OCA, because it's the typical um, modify the invoice uh, report layout or, or similar, so that doesn't fit on uh, on OCA, and only, I have to say, very, very, very small enterprise module where there is no alternative for uh, on, on the community. So that's all. I hope uh, this serves for you for raising some questions and some thoughts. And now, if you want to ask for anything, and here. <laughs> You said that one of the risks in uh, having your own module but not on the OCA is that your data structures might be suboptimal. Has the OCA a proper, a, 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 a protocol or a process to propose data structures and use cases for data structures? Okay. Uh, I'm going to, to repeat the question also for the, <laughs> uh, for the recording. Uh, he's asking uh, if there are OCA controls procedure or something for controlling the good uh, data structure health. Uh, about that, there are no, um, not uh, rigid protocols, but for sure the, the OCA contributors will detect early that possible problems. Sometimes uh, that's not a guarantee. You, you get OCA and you haven't thought about something. And nobody has stopped you on using that structure. It's a risk. You have also on OCA. But uh, two things about it. One uh, is version per version, we are detecting uh, what I call it uh, the semaphores, the warnings that leads to uh, consequences, and on each version, we are on the automated test uh, enabling more checks. So, uh, for sure, if something on the checks uh, are incorrect, uh, will lead you to think, oh, the structure is not the correct. And uh, with the help of all of you, uh, there are more eyes on each uh, possible contribution. So, uh, with this eyes, um, for sure, someone will raise the hand saying, hey, I see that you can have this problem. So it's a win-win situation. It's not automated, and there is uh, some difficulties to say, hey, what is a good structure? That depends on a lot of things. The Odoo uh, database model, uh, the, the core model, mm, this has uh, been modified through versions. So maybe on one version, the, the best structure is one, and on the following one, you have another tool, so another database layout for, for performing things. So there is no fixed guide for that. Um, but as I said, more eyes seeing a problem, it's more, um, it's easier to, to detect that problems. Okay. Uh, can you repeat uh, answers about? <laughs> uh, maybe uh, is the other uh, maybe the other microphone? It's <laughs> no. <laughs> it seems it's. Hello. <laughs> okay, my question was, uh, um, we know that uh, you are pretty much the first to answer nearly every ticket. How you can answer in 30 seconds that? 
<laughs> well, <laughs> that's a side question, but well, it's also interesting. That's uh, um, the way I, uh, I handle my own productivity, and it's a way of working where I call it uh, the five seconds rule, <laughs> which is uh, when something uh, when something arrives, um, a mail or, or something, I, I see it uh, for not moving my attention away from the, uh, from the job I'm doing, and in these five seconds, I can uh, decide if, if something is possible, so I, uh, I, I leave it, uh, or it's something that can be answered in a, um, uh, in a very fast way, so I answer at the moment, or leave it uh, for uh, later for a more extended uh, question uh, or answer. So that's how I handle my own productivity. Uh, this is not for, for all, because um, I, I, I have detected that my, um, my um, attention uh, umbral, my limit, is about one minute. So I get this time for doing things and not uh, distracting, but not everything has the same, and the same way of working and, and so on. I have to say that this uh, can be also trained. I was not uh, as effective as uh, some years ago, and uh, as um, um, due to my also my activity that is attending issues of customers and so on, I, I, I needed this and then train it and then extend it to the to the rest of the, uh, uh, counting also the the GitHub uh, things. Okay, so. <laughs> I hope this serves, and you can try. You can try to and, and tell me <laughs> uh, about. <laughs> Okay, several things about this. First, uh, contributing mm, can be, be uh, a lot of ways, not only, mm, let's see, spitting out some code for a pull request. There are also contributions uh, reviewing things. In my company, for example, we have the policy to one hour per day dedicate to review things, our own or others' one. So if you uh, provide this uh, at mm, business level, saying, hey, my uh, practical time is one hour less per day. I'm planning according that. Uh, allow that. Uh, you, you can say, hey, it's a lot of his investment or a lot of cost uh, for your company. Yes, it's an investment because doing that, you get first, uh, on your own pull request, you get another eye detecting possible problems for your own customer. So that can be part of your budget. Um, on my budgets, I, I have the development uh, time, but also the review time. So we review our own pull requests. Mm, I know that not everyone has the, the structure for having more than one developer or functional people, but uh, on OCA, it's very uh, easy also for functional people to try on Rambot the, the pull request. So mm, it's a uh, thing also that if you need to put a, a no do uh, for trying the, the functional people to, uh, for trying things, it's easier and, and get less time to uh, put the pull request and let the functional people to, to work on, on, on that pull request and to try on Rambot. And, uh, and the other thing is to go OCA first. I put the pull request as soon as I have my development. So uh, my flow is I put a pull request and on my deployments, I added this pull request 
to the customer. We have, uh, I don't know if you know about Dutba, it's our also open source way of deployment Odus. Uh, it allows to mention a pull request and it, uh, uh, it's merged on, uh, with the rest of the code. So you can deploy to the customer, but also uh, attending the OCA flow. So if there is any change you uh, uh, pro uh, propose by your own uh, customer, your own employees or other contributors, you do it on the, on the pull request and it gets with an update to the customer. So with that flow, we have been uh, efficient enough and not, um, and not get the, uh, that pull request stuck. But take into account that also reviewing, you get a, a get value because you know the rest of the OCA. Uh, there are a lot of times that uh, some of you get w with one module and I say, hey, this is in another module, this feature, or in another repository because you know that uh, the, the, the target of each repository is not, the, um, uh, is not unique. So uh, if you will know and dedicate some time to review, you will get, for example, knowledge about techniques on the code. There are uh, these things. And also about uh, features that you don't know and may, maybe you can apply to your customers. Uh, it, it, it was out of the scope because that uh, customer uh, don't want to pay a lot for that feature, but uh, being there, you can propose to your customer and then apply uh, the, the possible revenues for uh, that you invest doing these reviews. So please review also, not only <laughs> make pull requests. <laughs> Anything more, Sergio? Uh, Uh, well, on, on my side, uh, we have it very easy because all, the <laughs> all our technicians are <laughs> very experimented uh, and um, as soon as it gets to, to OCA and gets green uh, CI, uh, it's, it's enough. Uh, sometimes we, we have made mistakes. We, we have gone uh, one path and uh, or, or the requirements of the, um, of the customer were not clear or they changed their mind or maybe we, we made su uh, such mistake. Uh, we have also the, the tools on uh, Odoo for rectifying the thing. So we uh, publish on the same pull request the migration scripts for transforming the data structure from the previous one uh, to the next one, even being on the first pull request. The module wa uh, was installed with one version, we rise, we pump the version, and we provide uh, that migration script that only serves uh, to us. But it's a mechanism, uh, an allow mechanism that uh, provides us the, the way to do that. At the end, it's a bit more work, it's not too much. And you will need it to, to do it anyways uh, on your customer if you have installed the module and it's not correct. So it's not uh, something that you have to do um, uh, in addition uh, going the OCA way. Okay. Let me clarify. Uh, first, the, the, the question is, uh, what is the, the average time for merging something that supposedly complies the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you have to take into account the OCA guidelines. This is, uh, these guidelines set uh, first how to code uh, some stylistic th uh, uh, things and so on, but also the flow for a pull request to, to be merged. And one of the requirements is that you have to, to have two reviews 
at least and five days or three reviews. And one of these reviews, that is the blocking point, must be from one PSC. See, what is a PSC? Project Steering Committee uh, <laughs> person that is someone that merito uh, by meritocracy gets to that status. It's an status that you have to, to request and it's interesting also uh, for getting that status as um, giving you some, some fame being PSC, but also the, uh, the unlocking key for that things. You decide uh, on your on your scope if that pull request is merits. Why a pull request with a lot of uh, approvals is not merits? Because there is no maintainer of the module or PSC member that have said, okay, I trust these reviews and I merge. Or I, I have done the, the, um, uh, the review and see that is correct, so I merge. That's the main point why you don't get your, mm, your, uh, your pull request merge. The solution, mm, BPSC, uh, most of you can, can apply to, to that one and uh, apply with the responsibilities it has. If you merge something incorrect, uh, please provide a way to, uh, to fix it. No? The, the Spider-Man sentence is, a great power comes with a great responsibility. So that's the, that's the thing. Sometimes I'm, I'm the wild card, you, you ping me, hey, please merge. I see that there is no, nothing uh, conflicting, so I say, hey, I, I, I have that power to, to merge across all OCA, but not everyone has that power, but don't need that one. You can specialize on an area and apply for being PSC on that, uh, on that area. So Sorry. do that yeah, and I think uh, you will improve at least your, your paths. Exactly, that's that another formula to be a maintainer, I have mentioned previously, and I think this, uh, this can be some spoil, uh, spoilers of your talk, <laughs> tomorrow talk. So um, I, I'm going to, <laughs> to let him to explain what is uh, <laughs> the maintainer role. <laughs> okay, anything more? Hmm? No, okay. Ah, okay. Hmm. Uh, I was talking about the time. Uh, I know that is a bottleneck in the say you are uh, much more uh, PSC, PSC, si. uh, much more maintainers, uh, the time of the bottleneck is uh, not so crazy. But uh, the time, uh, because uh, in many, many situations you have to port from version 12 to version 13 to version 14. And this usually a simple, uh, a simple uh, pull request uh, is not so and, but uh, many pull requests stay, uh, stay on launch time, I don't know. Uh, and so the new version, the migration problem for OCA is a problem for your customer because you need that module that you know that you use it in version 12, but it's not now in version 14, is a PR that is uh, staging for uh, one year sometimes, for mm. one month, for six months. So you not have the, the uh, apps that you need uh, to start uh, with your new customer, your new client to, <coughs> to start your uh, project. Okay, so you are saying about one module that is on version 12, for example, but not on version 14. Yes. And that module has been already proposed to be uh, merged on version 14. The migration is done on a pull request. Well, I think it applies the same, review it, say that is correct uh, and <laughs> yeah Maybe. so if you have reviewed it you need an, at least another person for that and if not you can add it on your deployment flow to, to have that mm, pull request sometimes uh, we have added uh, contribution for mm, uh, from other from other people on our customers that are on an upper version, knowing that it requires another another approval that I'm not able on that moment to do it. But having a deployment tool that allows this, what well, I add that pull request, and I don't need to uh, to have it merged for for using it. So don't don't be too afraid about something not being merged. Be more about the quality of the contribution right. or 
mm, at least uh, uh, if you want to get merged, put the, <laughs> the resources for getting merged, that is having the, the, the reviewers and being PSC for having that power. <laughs> I, I can say uh, yes, another thing. <laughs> What's happened that I uh, use a folder with all the PR that I need, uh, so uh, also it will not merge, but I have this uh, repository that I use uh, <laughs> in a customer that uh, is working with the, uh, that uh, pull request. So uh, it used to work, but it's not merged because... Uh, yeah, uh, being automated or being manually, you, you can use that one. It's it's also uh, it's true that it's a pity to not have something that you think it works, or, uh, or probably it works. But the review process try to assure that what gets to the repository is in the best uh, quality state. So not being merged uh, means that only w one person has uh, tested that is okay. Mm. On OCA, that is not allowed mm, to, to be merged unless you have the, the responsibilities for doing that and saying, hey, I have tested, I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to merge. But for having that power, you have to prove that you are qualified for doing that. And this is the maintainer role or the PSC role. Okay. Meantime, I, I recommend you to automate uh, the most thing your deployment tools. And Dutra has uh, this mechanism. And another one, uh, Git uh, at, at the end we use uh, Git aggregator on the uh, on the background. So only with that tool you can also automate uh, that deployments. And mm, seriously, try to, uh, to to invest a bit of time reviewing and, and, and doing that, that thing regularly that you will find a lot of surprises around OCA and things that you don't know that mm, uh, are there. That's my advice. Thank you very much. <laughs> ok. Bene. Allora, abbiamo avuto modo di ascoltare di Pedro. E, insomma, siamo arrivati alla fine di questa prima parte della, della giornata. Dopo la pausa pranzo riprenderemo con Davide, eh, di, che viene direttamente da... Perché come ogni edizione degli Odoo Days noi ci teniamo diciamo, ad avere eh, quanti più elementi possibili utili a poter scegliere in maniera sana e specifica su ogni tipo di necessità che, che troviamo di fronte ai clienti. Abbiamo visto un punto di vista che è quello di, di Pedro, di Odoo Community Association, condiviso da tanti, ci sono altri punti di vista condivisi da altri tanti, per cui diciamo, noi in questa sede non, non possiamo metterci a, a fare i, i giudici, possiamo solamente dare quante più informazioni possibili al fine tale, uh, in maniera tale che eh, quando si va possa scegliere, uh, avendo a corredo tutte le varie possibilità, che ci sono installazioni pure enterprise, ci sono installazioni pure commissi, ci sono installazioni dove per necessità ci sono delle situazioni miste, perché alcune cose ce le troviamo già in Odoo Enterprise, altre le troviamo in Odoo Community e quindi la sinergia tra questi questi eh, mondi ci dà la possibilità di offrire un prodotto tecnologicamente avanzato ed innovativo ai nostri, ai nostri clienti. Uh, per cui diciamo gli Odoo Days tornano utili anche per avere tutti questi punti di vista perché effettivamente l'ecosistema è vasto, è vasto ed è anche complesso. Anzi così complesso che spesso e volentieri quando apri l'interfaccia di Odoo dici ah, ma è semplicissimo, no. No, ci sono processi dietro che vanno definiti, vanno incastrati bene, vanno fatte le scelte giuste e, e questo lo possiamo fare proprio perché abbiamo possibilità di scelta, cosa che in, in altri contesti, in altri settori non c'è, hai diciamo, quasi una strada obbligata, ti calano dall'alto una soluzione che è quella, la devi adottare in toto, punto. Noi invece siamo fortunati con Odoo proprio perché abbiamo la possibilità di scegliere su una vastità di soluzioni disponibili che possiamo dare ai nostri, ai nostri clienti. Chiaramente nel corso di questi due giorni vedremo anche altre, altre soluzioni. Uh, vabbè, io mi fermo qui, siamo arrivati alla pausa pranzo, perché chiaramente è arrivato Rosario, Rosario arriva alla pausa pranzo. <ride> Facciamo un applauso 
agli ultimi arrivati.